Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm going to be doing another drawing on sandpaper but this time with colored pencils and I'm going to be doing a drawing of this colorful butterfly. Let's have a look. So I'm going to be working on this piece of sandpaper and this is also a slightly finer grain. This is 1000 so it's a bit smoother and finer which is a good thing for colored pencils because uh, sandpaper tends to wear them down very quickly and as for the brand of the colored pencils I'm mostly going to be using Faber Castell Polychromos but uh, I'm also going to use a few of the Stadler uh, colored pencils uh, because I ran out of some colors which I plan to use here um, before I start uh, when, I, when I was experimenting, I came to a conclusion that on this particular surface um, colored pencils actually tend to behave in a very similar way as pastel pencils. There's very little difference in the way they are applied to this particular surface and you can layer them on top of one another very easily. You can work from light to dark and from dark to light as you will see. So let's get on with the drawing process. The quality of my footage will vary a little bit. Sorry about that. But the first thing that I'm doing is I'm going to create a little bit of variation in terms of tone and color. In the background I'm gonna make the top part of the paper a little bit darker and I'm going to draw some darker tones here. I want to create an out of focus bouquet sort of background uh, with some suggestions of lighter and darker shapes in the background. And the first thing I did was I used a bit of black colored pencil and I laid down some darker areas but then I decided before I start blending I decided to add a little bit of green here and there to create some suggestions of maybe some other flowers or grass in the in the background so our main subject which is going to be in the foreground is a butterfly sitting on a on a uh, flower which is mostly going to be of pink pinkish kind of color but right now I'm working on the background and as you can see I laid down the colored pencils pretty carelessly and then I started blending them with my finger now this is sandpaper and in the pre previous video I tested sandpaper with um, with pastel pencils which is normally what you would use on sandpaper but color pencils also tend to work really well on this medium and of course even though this is a slightly finer grain it's still a little bit rough on your fingertips so you shouldn't overdo it with the blending and you should at least try to switch your fingers because it will really wear down the skin on your fingertips. Anyway, as you can see, I'm achieving a fairly smooth, blurry look to the background, which is what I was going for. I want to achieve a lot of contrast where my main subject will stand out against the background. Now, here, <coughs> I have to tell you something. There is a limitation with colored pencils, uh, especially when you're working on a slightly darker piece of sandpaper like this. These lighter colors don't really blend as well and it's kind of difficult to achieve those smooth transitions and that blurry effect. It's a little bit easier with darker tones and that's why I think pastel pencils and soft pen pastels are a lot better for this type of purpose. So I think the ideal thing to do would be to combine pastels and colored pencils 
and you could use pastels to create or block in larger areas and work on backgrounds especially if you want to create out of focus backgrounds and you could use colored pencils for the details on the main subject and on the stuff that it's that is in the foreground because colored pencils are very good at drawing uh, those details so as you can see I'm just adding some lighter shapes or maybe some suggestions of lighter shapes in the background and I'm adding some other colors to the background because we are going to have some kind of a flower here in the foreground and you can see that I'm blending that with a brush I can use my finger to push the pigment into the grain of that same sandpaper but I can also use a brush to blend it even more smoothly and to create even softer edges so like I said since I am drawing a butterfly on a flower we can imagine that it's in some kind of a, a meadow or something and that there will be some other some other flowers in the background so I'm going to add some suggestions of some um, greenish and pinkish tones in the background as well uh, the flower is mostly going to be pink and uh, green so I'm gonna add some some of those colors in the background as well so that the viewer can imagine like maybe there are some other flowers out there in the background but those are out of focus and now I'm going to add some more darker tones here and maybe some more of these darker tones at the bottom just for the sake of balance then I can just keep spreading that with a brush until I get it to look really smooth and out of focus like I said uh, there's only so much you can do with uh, lighter colors because of the darker background and I think that pastels and pastel pencils are a lot more opaque and they also allow you to create a lot smoother transitions but you will see that colored pencils will actually be great at drawing details on a small and detailed subject and a colorful subject such as that butterfly now I'm going to start with a sketch and I'm going to do this freehand so it's going to be a little bit tricky and I have to be careful and I'm going to have to kind of gauge the proportions as I go along but I'm hoping that I will be able to fix any mistakes so far I'm pretty happy with the way the composition looks it's going to be very simple the the butterfly is going to be in the middle in the center of the paper and then the stem and the flower are going to be in the lower part of the paper and the, by the way the pencil I'm using now is ivory like I said most of the time I used Faber-Castell colored pencils but I had to use some other ones because I uh, I didn't have uh, the the right color so uh, the, uh, the butterfly is mostly going to be a combination of these two colors the the ivory which is a very light off white color kind of yellowish I guess and black these two colors will dominate but there's also going to be some bluish and orange detail on the wings of that butterfly so now I'm going to draw the antenna again using a combination of these two colors
as you can see I'm putting in some of the smaller details I zoomed in a little bit so that you can see some of the work that I'm doing here I'm using a, a tutelian with a very fine tip to do a little bit of blending and some corrections and the butterfly itself it's not a very difficult subject in the sense that you have to worry about um, likeness like for example when you're drawing portraits uh, but it's kind of detailed and there are a lot of these smaller finer details that you have to that you have to put in and this is a swallowtail butterfly and I do know they do come in some other colors, probably. Uh, but this one is the, the one that I had in my reference photo. And it's also probably the most common one, at least where I live. Even though I haven't seen one in quite some time. So I'm working around these lighter areas. I put in the lighter areas first because I didn't want to have to go over the black areas with that ivory color. But the thing is, because of this surface, because of the sanded paper, you can actually go over even some of the darkest colors with your lightest colors. And you can actually add some of these tiny lighter details working from from dark to light that's one of the advantages of sandpaper I'm also adding some grayish tones here and there and some of these lines uh, on the wings are supposed to be a little bit thinner but I'll kind of refine those finer details a little bit later I'll simply make them thinner by adding a little bit more ivory around them. Now the reason why Faber-Castell polychromos work so well on this surface is because uh, they are very vibrant and rich in pigment and they're also a little bit harder than some of the other pencils so uh, the sandpaper doesn't wear down the tip quite as fast as with, as with some other softer pencils. zoomed in even further so, so that you can see how I'm working on these tiny details even though this looks very complex it's actually quite relaxing because you don't have to worry too much about uh, the exact proportions the exact measurements so as long as it's close enough it'll look good I'm going to be adding some bluish and some orange tones here at the bottom but first I have to establish the basic contrast between these two main colors the ivory and the black the sandpaper I'm using is a waterproof 1000 grain sandpaper it works pretty well with both pastel pencils and colored pencils and in the previous video I talked about uh, those uh, potential complaints that this is not archival paper this paper is very very durable it's waterproof uh, so it's probably resistant to completely resistant to moisture and things like that the only thing that might be a problem is that because it's not acid free or I imagine it's not completely acid free uh, there may be some slight change in the colors over the decades but like I said honestly I'm not too worried about that this is a great 
surface for drawing and a great substitute cheap alternative for people who either kind can't find expensive art quality sandpaper or sanded paper rather or maybe they can't afford it so this is a very good alternative this is all that's left of my Faber Castell polychromos black colored pencil so I'm using this pencil holder uh, but for some of these larger areas I also used a Primo black colored pencil and I also used some Stadler's I, I think I used the pink one so I'm not really for me it's not a problem if I have to use multiple brands it's just that I think that on this particular surface I think that the Faber-Castell polychromos perform better than the others <clears throat> so I'm drawing these smaller lighter details in between and you know how delicate the butterfly, butterfly finger, uh, wings are here you can see I'm adding some slightly warmer tones to this ivory I added a touch of ochre and yellow here and there because it's not all of the same light color so I made some parts of it a little bit darker and a little bit warmer to create some variation but also to create some depth in that subject like I said if the, some of these lines these black lines turn out to be too thick I can always refine them a little bit later that's one of the great things about working with colored pencils on sandpaper you can always go back and work from dark to light adding some lighter shapes and details on top of the black or whichever darker color uh, whichever darker color you've used previously I was quite amazed actually at how easy it was to add lighter details on top this is all that's left of my Faber-Castell uh, black colored pencil I'm gonna resharpen it and I'm just gonna try to make most of it to use as much of it as possible the camera is still zoomed in because I want you to see the work on some of these finer details I am trying to draw these darker lines first and then add some lighter details on top of that later I'm going to draw this whole pattern of black lines and here you can see also some orange details but it's not entirely orange uh, there are some lighter tones around it so <clears throat> I went in with some ivory and then added, added some of that orange on top and it still seemed a little bit too strong a little bit too reddish for me so I added a little bit of yellow as well and that I think made it a bit closer to what I saw in my reference photo. I'm not going to stick to the reference photo 100% but I am going to try to make it look fairly similar. So I'm proceeding with drawing these uh, darker lines, these black lines, details in between the, in between the lighter shapes, lighter areas and working with colored pencils on sandpaper feels great because um, it's so easy to fill in the spaces it's so easy to fill in the grain of the paper 
uh, with when you're working on regular paper there are lots of these uh, smaller white spaces in between as you're trying to color uh, the paper and you have to be a lot more patient especially when you're trying to layer or blend but here on sandpaper it's actually very very easy and like I said the only disadvantage I see is blending larger areas where you need smoother transitions here especially with lighter colors uh, the colored pencils don't work quite as well as pastel pencils and if I wanted a blurry background that's especially of lighter color I would certainly prefer to use pastel pencils in one of the future videos I might actually combine pastel pencils and colored pencils on sandpaper so here I'm adding some more of these lines And as you can see, I kind of decided to draw all of the black lines first and then fill, it, fill everything in with the appropriate color a bit later. Uh, most of the people who watch my channel tend to prefer landscapes, or at least these are some of my most popular videos. I don't know if I should do more landscapes in color because I feel like I should do more work with colored pencils or pastel pencils or maybe I should draw more subjects like this because this was a lot of fun I should probably do a poll on that um, if you want to see longer videos in real time uh, full length videos with a lot of narration and explanations you should check out my Patreon. I have dozens upon dozens of full length narrated videos there. So if you want to observe the drawing process in real time and maybe even draw along and listen to some longer, more elaborate explanations, then my Patreon would be the place to go. If not, you can just check out my other videos here on YouTube. There are plenty of subjects, plenty of different types of drawings. And I do believe this is the first time I drew a butterfly here for YouTube. Although I've done a very similar drawing to this one um, five years ago, and it was done in graphite. I really like these orange details. I think they're really uh, making the whole scene a lot more uh, lively and a lot more interesting. I also like this blue. But now I have to add some of these two base colors that I used to blend everything together the black and the ivory I'm kind of trying to st uh, simulate the texture of the butterfly wings these delicate delicate transitions in colors and now I'm going back and making some of these black lines thinner by drawing in between them and you can see how much more realistic the wings are starting to look once I start refining these details
but the best thing about this particular drawing is how the main subject stands in contrast against the background the background is blurry and out of focus while the main subject is very detailed with some very well-defined edges and nice transitions between different uh, colors and different values so I'm using this pink color and this is a Stadler pencil here because I didn't have the, the appropriate color in the Faber-Castell Polychromos set so I'm going to use this and then I'm going to work over it with a Faber-Castell pencil for some of the darker details Time to draw these green parts Now I'm going to fill in this pink area <clears throat> I'm going to deal with the, with the stem a bit later but first I have to deal with the flower and I have to fill all of this in because uh, one of the things you'll notice about blending colored pencils on uh, sandpaper is that um, you can't really spread the pigment around like you do with pastel pencils you have to fill everything in now, the good thing is that it's easy to fill it in much easier than on paper but they still uh, don't blend that well so I try to push it a little bit with a brush but once I do that even though it does it does th make things a little bit more even it actually uh, allows the background color to come through a little bit so I don't really want that here I want that pinkish color to be fairly opaque in most of the places I also added a touch of some lighter tones on top of the pink uh, where the light uh, where the light would be um, Uh, uh, whether there would be a little bit more light on these parts because uh, some parts of the flower which are facing upwards they are facing towards the light source I'm using a magenta pencil and again this is a Faber-Castell Polychromos one I'm using this magenta for the darker areas in between and we'll see how that's going to go I am zoom, I zoom back in here so that you can see some of the work I'm doing on the flower the flower is uh, a little bit simpler obviously than the butterfly but I need to draw all of these petals and I need to try to create some depth in between them so that the viewer feels like they're looking at something that's three-dimensional so I'm kind of making some suggestions of darker areas in between them in between these petals and I want to make it look like some of the petals are um, uh, kind of curling towards the viewer and some of them away from the viewer so I have to shade in between them and I, I'm using some more of that magenta in between them so that I could indicate that these are shadow areas 
where there is uh, less light and uh, the ones that are sticking out they're getting more light and they're lighter uh, they're a lot lighter than these shadow areas So you can see I've largely managed to separate the light surfaces from the darker surfaces and now the shape of the flower is starting to make more sense in a three-dimensional uh, in a three-dimensional way. I'm also using some darker colors here to add some shadow at the bottom here where the flower uh, joins the stem. I'm doing some finer, finer blending with a tortillion and then I'm going back in with this lighter color, the pink one to emphasize these uh, lighter areas and to further push the range of value and increase the contrast so that I would increase uh, that feeling of depth There's also a little bit of texture on the lower side of these petals, so I'm trying to capture that as well. But the shadows and the contrast between the light size, sides and the shadow sides is more important. I moved on to the petal here, um, onto the stem here. Adding some shadow areas, and I'm going to make it look like the light source is coming from the right side. So this left side is going to be a little bit darker, but no, I'm not going to shade with that darker color all the way to the left side, to the left edge, because I want to make it look like there's a bit of reflected light on the left side. But the right side is going to be a lot lighter because it's facing towards the light source. And because I don't want the highlight to appear white, I added a bit of green and done some blending on it. And now I need to finish the rest of the flower and to finish the rest of these petals. Just adding a bit more shadow. And I kind of simplified the shape of the flower in comparison to my reference photo. And there were there were a, a more there were more of these petals, I think, in the flower on the reference photo. I kind of simplified it a little bit, modified its shape a bit, but I still think it looks fairly similar. Some of the colors are slightly different and that's okay because I wanted to adapt to my paper. So adding this middle part of the, of the flower and pulling some highlights on some of these petals. And once I finish with both the shading and the highlights on top, the whole flower will appear a lot more three-dimensional. Here I'm just doing a bit of refining on the wings. These are just some of the finishing touches. And I also need to add a few details on the body of the butterfly as well. So I still need to draw the legs and since butterfly is an insect, it has six legs. I'm not really sure if all of them will be visible, but I think here these are the the ones on the right, and at least two more should be visible, maybe one more.
I'm just going to fix this antenna a little bit. And I think that should do it. I, sh I will remove this protective tape and then uh, put down some finishing touches. Just a little bit of shadow here and a bit of texture. The drawing is done. I'm going to sign it with my black colored pencil or whatever is left of it in the lower left corner. And I think it's a nice little drawing. It's a nice demonstration on this sandpaper. As you can see, color pencils work very well on it. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful or entertaining. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.